on today's episode of Heights Chronicles. From 183rd Street to the 6th Building in Audubon, I got to have a sit down with the Washington Heights legend Gab, aka Gabriel Lopez. Yeah, yeah, we're going to detail his incredible life story from the days of putting in that work in the streets since the early 80s and the grimy 90s in the Heights. And how spending time behind bars inspired him to take his passions for writing all the way to Hollywood, creating opportunities to his peers along the way. Listen, my brother was in law and order and has worked besides the greats such as Keanu Reeves, Ed Norton, Al Pacino, and Denzel Washington. Need I say more? This one is epic, y'all. Get ready, mi gente. You already know. I need everyone to sit back, relax, grab a glass of your favorite whatever. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the Heist Chronicles on YouTube and follow Heist Chronicles on Instagram. And let's toast to today's episode of From the Heist to Hollywood. The Gabriel Lopez story, right here on the Heights Chronicles. Keep it going and keep it growing and aspire to inspire. For promo use only, not intended for mature phonies It's for the world, all my real ones and true homies The following content I present may contain Real topics for your brain, not intended for your lane. The Chronicles, taking you to elevated heights Lights, camera, action, it's factual Factuation on facts, water and land While we travel the globe, the go to touch every soul Let's go! Mercy Clothing Company. To purchase your orders, go to Instagram and follow Heights underscore Chronicles or N M R C Y underscore Clothing. Hit me on the DM to purchase your orders. I appreciate your support. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome to another episode of Heights Chronicles. I am your host with the most, Noah, aka Garvin and Noah, representing No Mercy, Washington Heights. Yeah. And today's guest, he's a Washington Heights legend to the third power. He's an MC a podcaster, a writer turned actor turned filmmaker who wrote and directed La Yola and my favorite, Por el Amor. You might have seen him in McDonald's commercials and numerous TV shows on Stars and Peacock. He's also made several appearances on Law and & Order and on many major motion picture films, including the Washington Heights classic, Pride and Glory, starring the legendary Ed Norton, which, by the way, also includes a cameo appearance with another Washington Heights legend, the great Manny Perez. He inspired me to create a platform such as this one so we could talk Washington Heights all day, every day. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, he's always been one of the realest from the sixth building. Shout out to the full man choose. I'm talking about my brother Glocks, a.k.a. G-A-B, a.k.a. Mr. Gabriel Lopez, a.k.a. Gab. Welcome to the Heist Chronicles, my brother. My brother, thank you for having me, man. And um, I'm glad for the intro, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate That's that. Good. And I'm glad to be in your show, brother. Now, um, my brother Gab, you was born in New York City? 
Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. And what hospital were you born in, bro? The 168th Presbyterian, brother. In the hood, in the heart of the hood, baby. That's the heart and, of the hood, the heart of the hood. And you always lived in the sixth building? No, no, no. I, I, I used to first live in, a, we first lived in 180th Street and mm. uh, in an abandoned building, which was the, the building in 180th between 181st and 180th. It's, a, oh, it's what, just what, one what building avenue? there. What avenue? And Wadsworth. What, 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 I remember there was some like yeah, abandoned buildings over there. Facts. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, and um that time it was like you know 75, 76. Yeah. It was an abandoned building. So my father got together with a couple of locals. At that time there was not that much Dominicans out here. Yeah. My father got got together with dudes that used to live in that building. They hijacked the whole freaking el the, the electricity and they it was cold and all of that, as my father used to tell me. And we was living in an apartment and we just got in there because it was rough times. And then from there, wow. you know, um, yeah, yeah, we I, we stood there for like a year and a half. I got sick. I got so sick that they thought I was going to die. So they took me back to the Dominican Republic and they brought us back. And there was a back and forth thing like that. And eventually this lady, may she rest in peace, that she's like a grandmother to me. She got us in a, she helped my mother get an apartment on 183rd Street. And mm. that's when I moved to 183rd Street in 1977. So, okay, okay. you know, 183rd should be to San Nicolas and Audubon. Mm -hmm. That was like, you familiar with that block, right? <laughs> of course, of course, brother, definitely. Yeah. And, 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 um, how many siblings you got? I know uh, uh, Preston Lopez is your brother, right? Yeah, that's my brother, Preston Lopez. Okay. Yeah. So, I got and this is you, J Pimps. No, no, it's J Pimps. That's I'm right, sorry. that's right. Shout out to J Pimpster, the legend, J Pimpster. Okay, okay. And um, before we move on, um, I want to let the world know about the 191st, 186th connection. Um, 191st is the first building, and 186 is the sixth building. So when you hear me refer to it as the sixth building or the first building, that's what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mima from your block, that's, that's my right, cousin. That's right. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Peace to my brother, wow. Black. Wow. I've been going to your block. I've been going to your block all my life since I've been a little nigga, you know what I'm saying? And then, wow. you know, you also wow. have the Bless. Bless from Bless used to be on my block, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bless. You know, Zoma and Cisco on used Shout to live on my block. So, so, you know what I'm saying? And then Jimmy and Rodney were like best friends and it's always been like a real bond with, with, with 191st and 186 clicks as we share a lot of history, you know what I'm saying? And Be Real was my dog, rest in peace, Be Real. You know what I'm saying? And and the legacy continues, the you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, now, yes. now, Gab, um, yeah, that's right, give me that's your right. earliest recollection of your hood. Um, you know, something from back in the days that will always be embedded in your brain, like, you know what I'm saying? No, no matter what. That story about, you know what I'm saying? You you know, your, your dad creating, you know, a household from an abandoned building is crazy. But what else? What, 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 what other? Tell me something that sticks to you forever that you will never forget. He was eating a plate of food. He just finished parking my father's van. Because, you know, the drug dealers at that time was very courteous. I don't know if it's still courteous. They used to back up the neighborhood. I guess it was because they wanted people to look out for them. And it was a community thing back in the days in the Heights. Everybody was together. It was a real beautiful thing back in the days. Actuation. And Facts. Yeah, d definitely. Now things kind of changed. I don't know what's going on. But at that time, he finished parking my father's van. Like, he said, don't get that you look like a van. I remember he was like a egg. Probably just had like two weeks they came from the Dominican Republic. Which he came from the Dominican Republic in, a, in Jola. You know, he came in a, in a mixed shape boat from Puerto Rico, then he skipped over here. As far as when he, you know, that's what I knew about. So he finished, parked the car, he sat down in a crate, in a milk crate, he started eating. He had like a plate of food, like rice, beans, and chicken, he started eating. And then all of a sudden, maybe like as we walk in to the building, with my father's, uh, you know, tools and all that, an old dude came out, like an old Morenito dude came out with like a beard, came running. And shot him like four times in the stomach. And all of a sudden you see the rice that he was eating and the beans that he was eating and a little bit of the chicken that he was eating was coming out of his stomach. And that left me traumatized for a long time. That was like one of the first things that I could recollect, you know, back in the day. That's crazy. The, yeah, 80s, that was the 80s, the 80s, the 80s and the 90s was real in the hood, fam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. were you MBB or WC? No, um, MBB, that was 
shout outs to MBB. That was Manhattan Bull Busters. That was Wade. Those were the big, big brothers. WC is the big brothers. OK is the, the younger brothers. But believe me, I was in 183rd at that time. My brother used to be with OK and all of that. You feel me? But you got to say, WC is the blessed and the dimes and the, and nice. the vest and the cobra. MBB is the black mics, the crazy Eddie. You know, those are the, that's my stages like that. You feel me? So I, we was always the younger. Those were my big brothers. Okay. At the time, um, yeah, at the time that that was going on, a it was a lot of tag in the eighties. Was a lot of tagging and a lot of gang banging and all of that. But when crack came to the t- when crack came to town, I don't know if it helped people. It helped a lot of kids in a way because it kept them out the streets, which was a good thing because there was a lot of gang banging, which I can see that now. But before there was a lot of gang banging too. A lot of gangs against gangs just killing each other. whatever. But when crack came, all those kids that used to tag and ride in the walls, they became drug dealers. So they, they came out of the street. They're like, yo, dog, I'm writing Thanks. overdues. We're going to get money. Yo, We're going to get money. Money, nigga, I'm out of that street. There you go. So that kind of fixed kind of fixed the heights. I'm going to keep it real in a way that everybody was making money. The legendary Nas said the drugs kept the hood from starving. So there you go. That's I can relate to that. I can relate to that because I've seen that. And I, you know, respect to Nas as well. And, um, but people don't understand. People might see it like in a negative way, but it did because the hood was starving. Dudes was really robbing. A lot of crime was happening. But when drugs came, it took out all those dudes that was tagging in the walls and was, you know, bombing the trains and everything and put them in the streets. The so streets that kept, there you, there you go. So as that was going on, you know, um, Overnight, you could say that dude just started black, like dude just started blowing up. How old were you when you transitioned from the street shit to the to the to the getting money hustling shit? You you know what is it about me? I could I could say I was like twelve. I was like twelve because so um yeah yeah I mean it was just that it was early. I didn't know. I just wanted to be a part of something, my brother. I would have done anything to to impress any of those dudes because how people look up to Robin De Niro, how these people look up to you know. Rappers like Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, whatever you call them. Those were my superstars. Those dudes in my hood. They was my superstars. They was my Robert De Niro's. They were my Denzel Washington's. They was how people look at, how fans look at them like that. I used to look at these dudes like, yo, these dudes are the ultimate. So I would have done anything to show them. I would have probably killed anybody just to, just to be uh, accepted in that circle. So at a young age, those dudes was wrapping you up. Literally, those dudes used to just wanted to impress them. So they used to be like, yo, Chama, keep the mind, I'm not going to say no names, but a couple of dudes that are heavy mentioned, they're not probably going right now. God at the air, so you know what I mean? Give you $50. $50 for a 12 year old at that time, $100 used to be like, man, put it up. Billion. You feel me? <laughs> Word. Yeah, it, was, it was crazy. So a lot of people probably thought that they got jerked, but they got them turned out to business because that was a, in, in actuality, you was learning business and you had to pay for that. But you was they were setting you up for business because only because you're dealing with product doesn't mean that it's you're dealing with product, you're dealing with people, you're dealing with uh with setting up, you know, spouse, with hustling, with marketing. That's like hustling is really marketing in the corporate world. Uh, uh, dealing with people, it's networking, uh, you know, so you're doing all of that and they setting you up for that. Was the with the the big dudes, whatever they was doing, whatever. Anyway, one of the first dudes that I seen doing it crazy that he was the first American Dominican that was doing it crazy. You know, you got to say the Hicks was kept getting it. You know, the Colombians was fucking with the Hicks all day every day. They wasn't oh, fucking yeah. with nobody but with them. You feel me? Facts. And Facts. the Mexicans and all that. So, no, with all due respect, I'm not trying to disrespect blacks, but they wasn't fucking with no blacks at that time. Only so few maybe in LA. But here in New York, it was Dominicans, nigga. And, 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 you know, PR, Dominicans, people like that that they was dealing with. And, but the Hicks, the Spanish, because say yeah, I'm a Colombian, so Dominicans, Mexicans, because they all. But the first American Dominican was Frank that I seen. Can't rest in peace. Rest in peace to Frank. Wow. His funeral yesterday. Yeah, his his he, he was the first one getting. So I used to be like, "Cool, you know, I do anything to be down with this dude, bro." He's up the block. He's right there. He's one of the big brothers. I'm like, I'll do anything. Yeah, because you're one eighty third, and that's where he's from. There's one eight there. So we was there. So LC, large criminals, you know, shout outs to large criminals as well. So 
I used to just be like, I really want to be a part of it. So I did whatever I had to do to be a part of Frame. Because at the time, Frame started blowing up. And you see Frame with a monkey. You see Frame with the first scooter with, with speakers. That shit is in style now. But before, you see Frame with like $500,000 worth of jewelry. You see Frame with the, one, with the first Wonder Woman bracelet. You see Frame with caddies, with Oldsmobile, with Jeeps, with rags, mm. with speakers, all crazy. You see Frame with, with exotic shit. I didn't even know about Gucci, about uh, Louis Vuitton, about all these all these brands that you probably, they talking about now. You know what I mean? Frame used to dress three times a day. Frame was getting like $200,000 a day. So it was it was crazy. So I used to be like, man, what a loco. So I would have done anything to be, you know. And Frame opened you up to how to hustle and all of that. But from there, Frame caught a murder charge. Hmm. So when he caught the murder charge, you know, I, other dudes were seeing that, that GAB got potential. GAB ain't turning, you know, he ain't, he ain't holding back. He's a knucklehead, but he's a loyal knucklehead. So when that was going on, my brothers from the six, because I had a, my brother Jerry used to always hang with the six. They used to go to school together and rock, and rock together. So they kind of like adopted me. Wow. When I was like 15 years old. And they took me under their wings. Shout outs to my brother P, LOZ, Egg the Bandit, you know, all these new VS, you know, Z O M E R, all of them. They took me under their wings. Again, brother, I was the type of dude that for whatever, whatever, I would have done whatever, whatever it takes to impress them. If anybody would have come, I would have been the first one put look, look at Sarah, just to let them know you're my brother. I do whatever you gotta, I'm down with y'all. So, you know, things started happening and we got together. I'm just fast forwarding the story. We got together. And I started rocking in the six. But before we rocked in the six, it was the smoke shop, which is considered the, one of the first Arabic smoke shops that they opened in, in, in New York City was based in 184 Street St. Nicholas. It was like, in order for you to be in that, in that smoke shop, you had to have balls because all the spots was there trying to hustle the customers there. So we lined up our shit and we, every day was right out like, to try to fight for the customers from Jersey. You feel me? Fast forward a little bit. During during this time, you you also fall in love with music. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I mean, what happened? What happened was I got locked up, right? I got locked up. No, that's I that's why I, that's where I was going. That's where I was going. Yeah, I got locked up in '97, '98, '98, right? And when I was in there, I used to see a lot of people, a lot of rappers talking about their neighborhood. But I used to be like, yo, I'm fascinated with my neighborhood. My neighborhood is a neighborhood nobody talks about. And I believe, just me, that Washington Heights is the best, craziest, more advanced, more ever than any neighborhood. I'm sorry. Shout out to Brooklyn, Queens, or, but Washington Heights, come on. You're not lying, Every brother. You're not lying. Every rapper has mentioned Washington Heights, the biggest rappers. Fact. Jay Kiko Garcia, shout outs to Nas, Wu-Tang, um, Dominicans, Colombian, whatever. I mean, I yeah. had a shootout, whatever. You know, whatever they did, they always just shout out because they knew that a lot of rappers was really rapping about Dominicans. I don't care what you say. Because Dominicans was the really, at that time, was the ones that was really getting it like that. Well, I'm going to say Washington Heights was the really, was the ones that was really getting it like that. Ain't no dudes from that. They was not getting it in that level. It was a few but never so much people one time getting it in that level. And that's actually facts. That, and they had to go uptown to go get that work anyway. Even, even a, no matter where you're from, you had to go uptown to get the work anyway. That's actual facts, my brother. I'm not, you you know, you, you, you vouching right there. I'm not lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I felt like, yo, why nobody's rapping about us, brother? Why everybody's rapping? And, and even the, the, the females in our hood, they exotic. Like nobody, you see these females with, with weaves and all shit. I'm like, yo, these bitches looking hurt. Why is it that my neighborhood is not getting exposed? <laughs> with all due respect, and that's real, that's real talk. So I'm like, why is it nobody getting our neighborhood exposed when our neighborhood is the truth? When nobody, yeah. when our neighborhood is considered for the for the crack, whatever, for the coma compressed, for the homes of millions of dollars, whatever. Anyway, it goes on and on. So when I got knocked, I started, I, and there I started writing. I'm like, Konya, when I get out, brother, I'm going to do some music shit. I don't care. I'm just going to go strong on the radio stations. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it like that, brother. So when I got out, I went out, bang, came out, whatever. I, 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 my mind was like, let's form up a group and watch the high school all safety. Shout out to Static, whatever, because he came up with the name. And then I said, yo, let's come, let's form up a group, name all safety, because I knew that my my. I wouldn't able to have so much talent. 
But they Facts. they into the drug shit. But our neighbor has talent all over and everything in basketball, Facts. baseball, Facts. boxing, and everything, and, and and rapping. So I said, you know what? Let's form up a group. So we did it. I didn't even know how to handle business at that time. What I used to do was run up in the radio stations with everything, with everything. With you everything. was doing demos. You was doing demos and going up on Hot ninety seven and, and and BLS. Yo, if you yo play me now, yo play me whatever, play whatever. Y'all gonna have to play us. But they was like, yo, we ain't trying to mess with the Dominicans because they from Merengue you know, at the time. You know, Merengue, yeah. whatever, none. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I met up with Roger Poletta. Shout out to Roger Poletta. We're good, just a little bit. The first platinum artist in Washington Heights. So he took me under Shout his out wing. to Roger Poletta. And check out the Fulanito, the Fulanito episode that I have right here on the Heights Chronicles. Oh, 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 shout out yeah. to Fulanito. Shout out to Dose. Shout out to Dose. Shout out to my and brother, Dose. These are the big brothers. These are the big brothers. So, Roger, damn, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm saying little intimate shit, but shout out to Roger because I love Roger. He's a gangster. You know, so we got a, we got the group together and all of that. And Roger was like, you got to, he was schooling me. Like, you got to do it like this. You got to do it like that. I just thought it was like, nah, but it's more to it. It's more business than show, than show. You know what I mean? Remember, Thanks. business is a couple of more letters than show. So it's more, you got to learn the business and then learn the show with bullshit. But business is very important because that's where the money is at. All that shit you can show, I'd rather have the business now than show. Before I wanted to be famous and I would have done anything, but I was getting jerk. I was getting pimped. But now mm. when you start getting yourself educated on the business perspective of it, that's when you start blowing. But anyway. Check this out. You know, there's like a there's like a, a clip on YouTube where like some European brothers with a camera crew came to came oh, to the hood. Wow. Wow. And, and wow. specifically in the six building. And not only did they document the hood, but you and your goonies was out there spitting bars and shit. Um, wow. Wow. Who wow. are these people that document to y'all? You remember? That was the, yeah, that was the first hip hop movie in Europe. Bring it on, Baba. Bring the ruckus. Okay. I'm in the cypher. Hey, yo, bring it on. Come on. hip-hop movie in the history of Europe, that was the first hip-hop movie. Wu-Tang Clan participated in it. Zulu Nation participated in it. Um, um, wow. uh, Guru, Guru participated. Guru, That's the piece, Guru. Guru, he participated in it. And since at the time, Def Jam signed Sweepy and Pat. Yo, shout out, shout, out, shout out to your brother. Shout out, yeah. shout out to Kuba. You know, I, just, I, just, I only want to see you win. And, and shout out to Sweepy. <laughs> And shout out to Sweepy uh, that's on the and video. Pep, and, Pep, and PB, Pep, 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 to my brother. Killing, Pep, the, uh, the, band. killing the freestyle. Y'all was killing the freestyles. I'm not going to lie. Wow. So we did that and there was signs. So we, they wanted to go, they wanted us to go on tour. But, uh, you know, the streets, we didn't even know. We didn't know business, brother. That was in 1993, 1994, when hip hop was, you know, was coming up. Hip hop was there, but we was talking. To so this, this happened before you went to jail? This That, that yeah, footage? Bro. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, shit. yeah. That happened in 1993, 1993. What did they charge you with when you got knocked and how long how long did you do Gap? They they charged me with an 81 felony for at the time it was under the Rockefeller law. And they, that if you get caught with over 56 grams, you consider is it, before that's why these rappers and a lot of people got together and started knowing that that shit was just targeting the Spanish and blacks so they're gonna have ever progress because 81 felony is a murder. 
You understand? Yeah, so they, they, they gave us the 50 cent. They gave me an A1 and dropped to an A2 when I copped out. I copped out to a, a three to life. And I did like 17, wow. 18 months in the island. And, and then from there, I did the shot program. And that's when I came out from 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 there. I did like maybe like 24, 26 months total or something like that. Or maybe, like, but whatever it was, it was around there. Then that's when I came out. So so you 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 was in there, but you was taking advantage of your time in jail. You was writing rhymes, you was writing stories. Yeah, so so I had that vision, like, yo, brother, I think I could do it. I think I could do it. I think my neighbor could do it. So I started getting together, you know, I put up a group together and from there we used to whatever. And then once I'm gonna fast forward the story, I met up with a they Roger introduced me to Johnny. Johnny Formulari. Are you familiar with him? No. Nah. And then Johnny Formulari was one of the first dudes I used to work in 96. 97.9 La Mega. Oh, he was in the station. Mega. Okay, okay. Yeah, one of those dudes that was doing the mixing before Addict Sensation and all that, way before that. Hey, Nori Koto. And that, Nori Koto, remember Nori Koto, Carl Nori Koto and all that? So they were yeah. both together. So shout out to Johnny. B. Johnny Fumulati always helped people. Always broke a lot of artists that a lot of people don't know about that. But at the, the same time, Casanova. You familiar with Casanova? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Casanova threw a statement, right? That Dominicans at the time we was trying to go in. I'm like, the Dominicans got my talent, but he was like, nah, man. He was just trying to push. A lot of people don't know that I try to do a lot of pushing for the community because I have faith and I always have faith in the community. Watch the high school of talent. A lot of people don't know about that. Facts. Apart from that, you know, I was getting on again, getting on, and then I got knocked again. I got mm. knocked again. So when I came back out, I was like, yo, brother, I'm gonna get into the movie stuff and all that. So um, before I got knocked, I did the Pride and Glory stuff, though. Oh, and shit. So you did Pride and Glory and then you got knocked again? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let's leave it. Let, let's, not, let's, not, let's not go to Pride and Glory just yet, my brother. During this time, however, even before you got knocked and all that, you um, are doing appearances in, in, in classic TV shows like Dominican USA and, and the Preston Lopez show. Anything goes exclusively. Um, Tell, tell us a little bit about that song. Mm -hmm. I know, you, you know, you say it without what you were saying to me. Just say, you know. No. Well, well, basically the song, you know, the song, look at it from this perspective, means like, you know, I went through a little experience. I, was, I did a little time. And during all that time, you know, I passed, I passed through a lot. My, I seen a lot. And I was linked up with a couple of people. And issues we had issues and i know you talk about snitch and this snitching and, and rats and all of that the whole nine y'all so that's so all y'all snitches express, out there no doubt it's a four y'all snitches out there that's why i express myself like that you know i express myself through my songs but basically i'm very nonchalant who um who produced who produced the, the single the song well the, the song basically was produced by street sweep static the dawn and echo you know it's all newborn, newborn labels gonna come out with it. Newborn label. And you, you wrote all the lyrics and everything? I wrote it, composed it, I edit my own things and all of that, you know? When do we think, like, when do you think we're gonna come out? I know you only have like one or two singles out right now, but um, are you gonna make an album or is it, is it a solo project? A compilation album, a compilation album. The whole, what we we combined it, the Washington High City, we combined a, a couple of artists, basically on um, Street Sweet, you gonna hear a lot about him. Eight dollars, eight ball. Um, Echo, Young G. We all combine it. We're gonna do our own click. The click's name is One Eight Six. The Soldiers. Let's see. That's Watch the Heights. That's Watch the Heights. Yeah, I, I, I rep. I, I rep everything. You know, I give love to L I, D X, Crooklyn, Watch the Heights, L E S. I give love to everything. Across seas, Arabia, everything. But basically, we here. You know. Shout out to Freddie Imperial. Shout out to brother, um, Preston Lopez. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I, I need yes, both of y'all yes. on the podcast. So after your first stint, or maybe your second stint, you meet Ruben Rivera. Tell oh, I everyone. met Ruben. Go ahead. No, no, no. no, no, I just, no, no say, say it because I like, that intro, I like that introduction that you was about to introduce. I like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now, nah, um, tell everyone um, who Ruben Rivera is and how y'all met. Ruben Rivera is somebody special. I messed with Ruben yeah. Rivera since we first met. Because what happened was that I did this show, right? I wrote the show. And I did, I actually, when I wrote the show, I actually grabbed the cameras and I believed in my show. And I did this show. It's called CITC, the City Inside City. 
And the show was based on Washington Heights. And we did our first episode with uh, Michael Yado. Shout out to Michael Yado. And um, these, this Arabic guy, his name is Sick. Slick, Slick. Slick, or Slick, or Sick. I don't know. I forgot his name, but he was the one that provided the cameras for us. He believed in the show. So we did the first episode and, and it caught a lot of people loved it. They didn't believe it. It was like, yo, what the heck? So when that came, a lot of people, a lot of investors wanted to invest in the show. Yes. Through there, this guy named um this this guy, I'm not gonna really mention, he was there, but he was out, I believe that he was out there just to, I don't know, brother. He was out there just to bullshit, but I didn't even know the business aspect of the shit too. So when the whole thing happened, we got this investor, but the investor got robbed by this guy that brought the investor. So the investors got, they left, you feel me? So when all of that was going on, Rube was like, he didn't know what really was going on, but Rube was the one that was providing the actors. Rube was the one that was providing the heavy actors, the heavy duty actors. And then, mm. and then one time Rube said, yo dog, tell me what it is. Like I said, he said, yo, it's you that's behind all this, right? Because this man is saying that it's him that's behind all of that. And I said, yo, my brother, that dude saying shit like that? So after that, we we cut off all the dead skin, all the whack ass shit. And that's when me and Rule, we saw eye to eye, we connected crazy. And we started hustling the product, the product. We went out to LA, Niles was, you know, a lot of people liked it, what we was doing, loved it, what we was doing. But through the whole transaction of what we was doing, there was this guy that, that tried to sue us. And when you have a lawsuit, in a, and I'm, I'm, I'm revealing it right now. When you have a lawsuit on a show, a lot of the major companies, they don't want to mess with it because they don't want to get attached with that. And that's the whole story behind that. But me and Rube kept it like that because of that. And that's a beautiful thing. Rube is my brother, man. And Rube always, anything that I ask for, he's always there for me. Anybody that I want, he's always there. For, and it's, it's crazy. That's the relationship that me and Rube got. Man. That's my big brother. Right that's what's up. That's what's up. Gab, what, what, what inspired you to acting and, and what was your first break, whether it was a commercial, TV, film? My first break was, um, shout out to Nemo. My first break was Pride and Glory. Oh, yeah, mama, Nemo, que lo que, huh? Tumba eso, loco. I'm sorry. Que mama, we want to start buscando un plomazo. Oye, que lo que, mama, Nemo, huh? Baby, necesito tu amor, mi amor, y otra cosa. Bring me a potato. Tú sabes, loco. Dime. Explotaron el taxita y el carro. Lo portamos el taxita, loco. Fue un cuño bien plumazo, loco. Mira. Pam, pam, pam. Con este fucking cañón. A mí no me importa, loco. Oye, mamá huevo, otra vez, maricón. ¿Qué es lo que es, ah? Oye, quédate quieto, con lo suave, oye. Anyway, it hurts. I'm sorry. Lo siento. Quédate quieto, oíste. Salud. Oye, eso. Ma, llama a Morita, espérate, llama a Morita, que estoy ocupado ahora mismo. Sí, 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 llama a Morita. Mira, mira, mamá huevo. That was your first break, like the Friday Glory. I mean, you know, you, that's you crazy. Know we did the, the, but you know that we did the Europe, the European movie, but I didn't even know that was a movie. But in reality, when people, these, a lot of Arabics and a lot of Africans from Europe are coming over here, and every time yes. they see us in the streets, they like, yo, they like thinking like we're a movie star. I'm like, they hear like, what the fuck? And then one time, my brother Harash, that he's from over there from Europe, he said, yo, brother, y'all niggas is movie stars over there in Europe. Don't y'all don't know that? Yo, my brother, what? and they love y'all more. They love y'all more because y'all look like us. Y'all look like Arabics. They love y'all more than all the hip hop dudes that they want y'all to come to Europe. And I'm like, what? You? And then Ali, rest in peace, Ali, he was like, yo, my brother, y'all people. And then Africans from over there used to come just to see us throw pictures with us and I'm like, I don't know what the, f your people are the big, one of the biggest people. Cause that was the first movie in Europe and hip hop. So that was like the first movie that I participated in, you feel me? So you, you but building I, a resume and you don't even know I don't even what know. is the, like the impact. You don't know what impact you're having yeah. across the, yeah. across the, across the world. That's crazy. So 2008, the release of the Washington Heights classic, Pride and Glory, starring the great Ed Norton, Colin Farrell, amongst others, as well as the you know the Washington Heights legend um, M Manny Perez. Gab, yeah, one day I'm in the hood. I'm on the I'm on my block on Wadsworth. There's a whole line of like movie trailers, <laughs> and and you see us on the block, 
and you could you like, oh, yo, yo, we shooting, we shooting down in Watts with service and shit. Uh, but yo, I had we had no idea that it was gonna turn out to be this this incredible film. Yeah, wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And t- tell us about that experience, my brother. It was one of the greatest experiences because yo, my brother, when you when you put your mind to something and you put your heart to something, don't ever let nobody derail you from that. When I was young. You know, and I love my parents and everything, but my parents once sat us down and said to all our brothers, we are six siblings, just in case. We six wow. siblings. Yeah, wow. and he sat us down and he said, listen, what you want to do, what you want to do when you grow up? And everybody to impress my father used to be a mechanic, a mechanic, and I'm the only one that said, I want to be in the movies. And he said, don't say that again. No Dominicans will ever be in no movies. That shit is a lie. You got to work in this freaking country. That's when you come over here. You got to work. You got to be the somebody that go to school. But there's no such thing as a Dominican act. And that shit, don't say that to your kids, bro. That shit killed me. Dude. Hell no. So the first got, time that I can't. I got my little daughter. She, my little daughter has been in numerous commercials. She was in a in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a Kanye West Super Bowl commercial. My daughter, she's been in, in, in a movie with Michael B. Jordan. They calling her right now to be in a movie with the Rock God Will and that shit goes down. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, believe me, no, man, you know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing. Congratulations, yeah, man. man. That's a beautiful Thank thing. You, and, and and when my father told me that, I was like, wow. So when I came out of Pride and Glory, the first thing that I came to my father running and said, you see? He didn't even remember. So I'm talking about maybe that was like 30 years ago he told me that. I said, you see? Yeah. I came out of the movie. I came out of the movie. And he was like, he didn't even understand. I'm like, Yo, you was the one that I came out of that shit, you know, so I I fought against all odds. That probably gave me more energy to prove, because I'm the type of person that I try to prove you wrong if you tell me that I can't do it. So that's that was the great experience I, with John Voy, with um with Colin Farrell, with Andrew. There was a lot of, yeah, there was a lot of beautiful things. That was a great thing. I had my own trailer. I was like, what the heck? I got my own trailer here. The 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 attention that you get, you feel like, wow, this is a great thing. I want to be here. You my brother Kuba, shout out to Kuba. You know Kuba, shout out to my brother Kuba. He was right there with me. That was my partner. Nice. So when, nice. when that happened, when that happened, I get knocked again. Wow. Yeah, so when the, the release of 2008, I was in a halfway house. And I got in trouble. That's how I went to the premiere. So you went, the, house, yeah. you went to the premiere and you was in the halfway house? Yeah, my brother, you had to be in the halfway house at 10. And I got there at 10 30. I thought I was gonna get violated. Gangster, I remember, man. yeah, my brother. So I remember that that I went over there and all the artists, that's when the MMA stuff was popping and everything. So I, I took a lot of pictures with a lot of dudes from MMA. It was just a, a great experience. But I was of getting back locked up just because I wanted to go to the premiere. So when I went over there and I came back, I got in trouble. They didn't let me go out for like two weeks after that and all of that because I came half an hour late. But I was like, you know what? I don't care, brother. Okay. <laughs> it's worth it, so, yeah, man. Yeah, it was worth it. It's worth it. it. it was worth it. Wow. So, now, you mentioning that, um, and I know you've been in a lot of in a lot of circles with a lot of great people. Who in Hollywood that you met so far mm-hmm. that 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 you the starstruck? Like, damn, this is this is like you know what I mean that you couldn't believe that you know what I mean that you 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 actually met Al Pacino. Wow. The yeah, the I goal. Went the hunter. The go. I worked in the Hunter as a as a. You could watch the Hunter. I worked in episode four as the cop. I think you know about that as the police officer, as the security guard for the bank. Yes, you know, sir. Yes, whatever. Sir. I don't care. Whatever that. He was in the movie. He gave us an advice and all of that. Another dude. Uh, um, my man from the Matrix. Uh, Keanu movie. Reeves. Keanu With Reeves. Big Daddy I worked. King. With Big Daddy I worked King. In Exposed. I worked. I worked in Exposed too. So, just watch the movie. I worked in Exposed. I was one of the core dudes from the buildings. I came out throughout the whole movie. He gave us a great advice. Very Keanu Reeves, beautiful, Al Pacino. Beautiful, beautiful people that, you know, knowledge is power, brother. When you give that knowledge to others, man, some people want to keep that because they don't want others to shine. But dudes, when they give it to right. you like that, and, and Al Pacino gave us a lot of things like keep keep your dream, you know, keep it going. As, as Keanu Reeves as well. I met Denzel Washington, but uh, I worked in American Gangster as well. And um, I met Denzel Washington, but he was, I don't know, maybe it was that he was into his character, but yeah. I, don't, I didn't yeah. understand him. He wasn't fitting nobody. I don't know. So I left him a little bit alone, but I worked with him yeah, yeah. for 14 hours. And he was just like, I don't know. He But shout out to Denzel. I met um, 
uh, Edward Norton. Nah, Colin Farrell. Edward Norton is cool, but Colin Farrell, beautiful person. Um, it was, it was. I, I met a couple of people, man. They cool. Uh, uh, Sofia Delgada worked in the ninth inning. That movie, the ninth inning, with Sofia Delgada. So run down, run down your resume, brother. Law and Order. Law and Continue. Order. Um, Sweet Bitter. Um, uh, Canty Berry Law. Um, uh, American Gangster. Um, uh, uh The Hunter. Konya. Uh, um, McDonald's commercials. Come, yeah, McDonald's commercial. McDonald's commercial. Uh, uh Trouble in the Heights. Uh, Exposed. Um, um, ah, oh, wait a minute. I work with The Rock too, my brother. Woo. Yeah, I work with The Rock and, uh, and my man, Mark, uh, Mark, whatever, Mark, uh, the, Mark Wahlberg. The movie, uh, Mark Wahlberg, the movie, um, that movie that they got that, that they both cops that I came out of the yeah, end. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm talking to the dude that the inmate with, um, coño loco, the, the, the resume. The resume is so the crazy; it, it, it don't even it don't even register sometimes. Nah, it, it, nah, it is just that, um, <laughs> that I believe that when you do something yesterday, always be humble. So they act like that never happened, and keep on studying. Like, don't let that shit get to you because right. we as humans got a tendency of getting shit, letting shit letting our head blow up. So I try to keep right. myself always grounded, brother. Because if that shit gets to you, that's bullshit. I'm trying to take it to the to another level. So yesterday, what happened? Trying to move, move on to the next one. You're trying to move forward. Move on to the next one. Move on to the next yes, one. So McDonald's, that was a beautiful experience. That shit was real good. I did it in Spanish and in English, which was crazy. I wow. did a, a, I did a, 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 the commercial for, a, not the iPhone, the other phone, Sam's, Samsung. Samsung. I did that okay. as well. Yeah, I did the, the, the commercial for that. Um, there's a couple of things that I'm actually in the works right now. The works right now. I'm actually beautiful. Auditioning right now. <laughs> that's beautiful. That, that's so, beautiful. So, man. Yeah. So I mean, I just keep, I'm just trying to maintain. This is nothing. A lot of people confuse my my confidence with cockiness. I'm not that dude. I came from nah, a beautiful man. neighborhood that I should be proud of because our neighborhood is crazy. You know what I mean? You always like, been a real little guy. You always been a real I mean, one, and, and and everybody, every you know, what I'm saying every everybody that knows you, you know, what I'm saying everybody that knows you knows you know who you are, and thank you, you know, what I'm thank saying, you, and yeah, my, my bro, uh, um, acting lessons, yeah, you, you you have you gotten any coaching and shit like that? Yes, yes, uh, yes. With uh, um, uh, one of the one of the things uh, acting lessons that I could tell somebody is relax your shoulders, you know, um. You know, I, I took the Meisner technique and shout outs to Karen Reposo, which is my, she's my manage, manager and Jay Hugh. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to throw that, but those are the people that, that believe in me, you know what I mean? And um, she, she has, a, she has a, sh a thing that she does that every week she hires an actor to teach her, the guys that she's representing, which is a beautiful thing. And one of the things that uh, Luis, oh, Luis Ramos, you, you know, Luis Ramos. Beautiful act. Awesome. Shout out to Luis Ramos is the one that did the, do the right thing. The Puerto Rican do that play, do the right thing. He oh, okay, 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 okay. He told me something that I will never forget. He said, when you are in an audition, relax your shoulders. Listen to that. That'll change your whole life. Relax your shoulders. Ain't that crazy? Just relax your shoulders, brother. Because you just get relax. Relax yeah. your shoulders. And you'll be, that, you know what I mean? Just, that's where it begins. That's where you know what I mean. Yes. The spinal, the spinal cord, and the tension, and 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 your cerebral, and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's connected. That's 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 crazy. The uh, gap. Um, Sid City is the YouTube channel. Phenomenal work, which you directed <laughs> and wrote. You put oh, you, and you put a lot of um up and coming talent in your films as well as you know um established. Talent like Hassan Johnson yes. and, and, and another another Dominican who's been making moves in the industry, the brother International P. Yes. Um, before I move on, I want to give a rest in peace shout out to my brother, 191st, 193rd native, Pupito, who appeared in your movie, La Yola. 
Oh, you made that happen, man. brother. Oh, you made man. that happen, bro. That's my what bro. What a beautiful dude. Oh. <laughs> That's my guy. What a beautiful That's dude. That's my guy. What a beautiful family. dude. What That's a family. Real one, family. Huh? That's family. What a real one, huh? Family. That's family, man. You don't need um, to know your brother. Those dudes don't come. They don't come. They only come once in a, once in a lifetime. Yeah, you get you get the opportunity, the privilege to be amongst somebody of that of that caliber. That's so so yeah, Pupito, let me tell you something about Pupito, brother. Now that we're talking about that, rest in peace to Pupito. Rest in peace. I don't care what I don't care what is about Pupito. Pupito would have killed you in rapping. His rapping was different. His talent was no. different. His talent no. was different. It was something new. What he was gonna do? Oh my god, this guy was Pupito was really I got him. I got him in songs. I, I believe me, I know. I know the problem with him. You know what I'm saying? And it's, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. I mean, you know, we're not talking bad about him or anything. I used to tell him, yo, you got to structure your songs, bro. What you say is <laughs> ill. But he was like all over the place with it because you know that nigga's a wild nigga, son. You yo, know what I'm saying? I know. I know. And, how could you, how, a, wild, a wild dude like that actually could put him in, and, 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 and him to have him acting? Think about that. He was about that life, yo. He was about that life, and whatever you put, whatever it was that like creative wise, movies, music, whatever it was, he he was he was gonna shine. He was gonna he, yeah, if you give him, give him the opportunity to shine, he was he was gonna take advantage of the opportunity and shine, man. Rest in peace, rest in peace, to Pupito. Shout out to my brother Clever. Shout out to Rugged. You know what I'm saying? Um, you mentioned your love for acting. Um, but I you transitioned to the love of uh, of writing and directing your own films as well. Las mortales del naufragio registrado en las costas del noreste de la República Dominicana. Cadáveres recuperados son los de un hombre y una mujer. Las labores de rescate van a continuar, aunque se descarta que aparezcan más supervivientes. 70 personas pretendían llegar clandestinamente a Puerto Rico. Empezó a llenarse de agua tras romperse su casco a causa del fuerte oleaje y el exceso de peso. Maria Gonzalez René. Here is a lady that's gonna risk her life to search for the American dream by jumping on a makeshift boat, risking herself, passing through the Bermuda Triangle, coming from the Dominican Republic to Puerto Rico, and taking the biggest risk with her niece, her brother's daughter. Mommy, Ben. Yes. Um, listen. Um, I love, I, I, I love the yo, I love La Yola. My favorite, um, I have to tell you, is Por el Amor. I oh, think wow. that shit was, oh, wow. I think that shit was cleverly written. Like <laughs> wow. when you wrote that shit, you, uh, you, uh, wow. uh, it sounds like some some shit that you probably experienced. Is, is that what happened with that shit? <laughs> that shit is crazy, yo. <laughs> you're crazy, man. You're, you're crazy. The thing is that you know what is it? Sometimes you're talking right, and the best thing is. Acting or whatever is something or whatever when you write. Don't be scared to be you, brother. Don't be scared to be you. And that's what people's going to gravitate. A lot of people write or a lot of people do things and they feel like, oh, my God, but there's a billion people that is going through the same thing that you're going through. I'm not saying that I went through the whole thing with the Por el Amor shit. You feel me? Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. What happened Por el Amor was that that happened to a friend of mine. I figured. I, I, yo, it, it, it didn't. Uh, you know, even the part where you you put, I don't want you know, I, I want people to go check it out. You know what I'm saying? Go to go to Sid City on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? City check inside out every, city. City inside city. City, city okay, inside city. City, okay. It, uh, it's on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? All my brother's work is is is, is mm -hmm. on there. And there's a scene where your 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 spouse, whether that's your husband or your wife, you find out. Um, you know that they 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 haven't you know haven't been the most loyal to you or whatever. There's a scene where you actually prepare like a poison to 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 to. Oh, to you know what I'm saying to that like dude. Yeah, man, thanks to you, man. I follow your regime. I love your regimen, man. Every day eating good, eight nine hours of sleep. You did real good with the pull-ups today, man. You're really getting up there. Yeah, I try. I'm try. You know, I feel like the regimen that you're telling me I'm following it, and it's doing good. Cool, bro. Keep it's it up, man. Good. Hey, you know the ladies love it. I noticed that. I'm sure your wife appreciates it. Oh yeah, she does. 
something that smells very good, huh? Yeah, man. I can smell it, huh? Oh, yeah, it looks good. Cheers, baby. Cheers, bro. Just give me one second. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Pam, you home? Yeah. I'm Smell cooking good. something very tasty for all of us. Oh, all of us, babe? Come to the dining room, baby, whenever you get a chance. No. I'm right here. My love. Oh, Enrique? Pamela. Pamela? Enrique. Hey, yeah. That's my buddy I've been talking about. The guy, the guy from the park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Hey, make yourself at home. <laughs> <laughs> But but Gab, go ahead, go, go ahead, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Co continue. It, it, it was a true story. Go ahead. It, well, no, it was just a true story. So it captivated me because this guy, man, he was going crazy. He was actually going nuts. And you don't know what people are going through, my brother, because he actually committed suicide. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, but I ain't going to say no name. Yeah, he actually committed know, suicide. So um, when he was going through that, that's why you got to reach out to people. When they talk to you, brother, pay attention. You might be like, you know, that local, you know what I mean? But then see, see what he's saying, brother, because you never know. He's probably screaming out for help, but he's very, his pride and the ego ain't letting you, like, I'm still, but he's probably telling you, yo, I need help. So he was doing that. And actually, I saw his spouse. And yes, I was that local. That shit crushed me, my brother. Wow. You feel me? So yeah. it's a big, crazy shit that I was like, and you wrote and it down. Shit. You wrote it down. I said, I got to write this, brother. I got to write this. Just like the story, que se llama El D'Alessandro. You seen D'Alessandro? I haven't touched on all of it. I know it was, I know I saw that one and I saw the um, the police one. Um, D'Alessandro? The... D'Alessandro? Like, they go into the apartment and they do all that. They raid the apartment and they rob. Yes, yes, the yes. I saw that one. Yes, yes. D'Alessandro. Those are true stories, brother. Those are true stories. Because I feel like Nowadays, with this internet right now, they're talking about freedom of speech, but in reality, this is fake. There's no freedom, of, there's no such thing as freedom of speech. Either. Nah, you gotta be careful Facts. now. You know Facts. what I mean? But if you could really be yourself and let it go out and let it go, you know, it's crazy. But right now, every, everything gotta be walk, walking on eggshells when you're doing certain things. And it's nuts. But I'm just like a free dude because today you're here and tomorrow this might be our last conversation, my brother. And fact. this is the actual fact. And, 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 and so what you got to throw out there as your last conversation, educate the new generation that's coming up. Don't be scared to grab your knowledge and give it to others. You know, always let everybody know whatever you're doing, you could do it better than me 50 times. It just depending on you, how you want to do that. It's all on you. You, your worst enemy or your best friend. Baby. It's on you. It's not on me. It's on you. So. A lot of people think that it's difficult to break in, whatever. Nah, man. Start if you want to do this, start right now. You see, Frank, I was writing a documentary on Frank. Thank you. By the way, thank you for that jewel that you just dropped, because that's what the Heist Chronicles is all about. It's for you know what I'm saying for the for, for our viewers and our listeners to to grow to, to know that we started from the dirt, but now we're here. And we're gonna continue doing it, baby. That's right. That's right. That's right. Continue, continue That's right. my brother. You you working? You was working on the life of a, a, a frame. A frame. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 I, I know Static in his book. Mm -hmm. You know he 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 um you know um had a, a couple of a couple of chapters on frame, as well. Uh, um, with the '80s dope house. Shout out to my man. Shout out to my man Static. And um yeah, continue, my brother. Yeah, nah, so yeah, so I was working on a documentary with him, and it was crazy that our last conversation. You know, he died the 28th, and I had a conversation with him the 28th. And my, and my, uh, we was going back and forth. I was, in, I was actually in Mississippi because we tried to go on vacation, us and the family. And he was, it was weird that he was like, I'm going to give you the story. But grab a phone, brother, and just whatever, man, just grab a phone and do it right now. And I'm like, yo, frame, I don't want to do it again. I want to do it right because you deserve, you know, the right proper camera crew <clears throat> to go into a location that we could sit down and we could do the shit right. No, no, no. I don't want to He was like that. And something that touched me about Frank, that the last conversation he was telling me, you know, I don't, nobody loves me. Nobody, uh, mm. nobody gives a fuck about me no more, my brother. Whoa. And I said, don't ever say that, brother. You're a fucking legend, brother. You're an inspiration because of certain people like you, you know what I mean? A lot of people are in another state of mind, you know what I mean? So he was like, nah, man, you know, my family, whatever. And all of a sudden, we broke into a prayer started praying. I don't know. 
I, bro- I don't know why. I was just like, no. And he started going, ooh. You could hear him say, ooh. Ooh, that sounds beautiful. He never done that ever in his life, ever. And then, you know, his frame was a dude that every time you talk to him, you laugh. It's like a beautiful laugh. You know, it's always an enjoyable environment. And you laugh and he's making you laugh. And all of a sudden, he drops the phone. All right, we talk. Then he calls me again. Gee, I got to holler at you. I said, call me back. And he said, you know what? Let me get my thoughts collected. Let me take a shower. Let me get lit. GPR for life. Stay focused, my brother. I'm going to holler at you. And I never heard from him again. You understand? So these are the things that the best thing to do is not how you start, but it's how you end. You understand? In life, it's not how you start, but it's how you end it. You could start super good, but at the end, if you trash it up, that's how they're going to remember you. Facts. You know, the last, th- the last thing that I remember about Frame was, yo, brother, we prayed. And I feel like whatever happened after that, it was a uh, he left tranquilo. You feel me? Wow. I don't know. I don't know why we're shifting up to this, but it no, is no, no. Rest in peace, frame. Rest in peace, frame. And watch it say he's legend. You're gonna be forever missed, bro. Um, damn, son. And yo, this we talking about recent curve. We talking about current events right now. You know what I'm saying? While we are recording this right here, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. He was just at that funeral. Uh, yes. And, uh-huh. and you you told me that. It was a beautiful service. And for the first time brother, in my life. For the first time in my this life. Brother, and here this brother was telling you that nobody loves him. You see, that, that that's crazy. That's that's yeah. that's crazy, man. Rest in peace, frame once again, man. Um, you know, as we as we wind down this episode, this phenomenal episode with the brother Gab, aka Mr. Gabriel Lopez, the Wild Cowboys. Um, you okay. have Pacolito interview on deck that Mm -hmm. is long overdue and half of the world is waiting for. When is that releasing? How were you even able to get that conversation from this brother? Uh, How we connected, how me and Paco Lito connected, shout outs to Paco Lito, shout outs to uh, Rob Acosta, shout outs to Fat Danny, you know, and how we connected was to a uh, his brother, my brother Bugs, you know what I mean? My brother's Bugs. And as soon as we connected, we conectamos tranquilo. We, you know, we got, I got like eight years, nine years, you know, visiting the brother and all of that. And the brothers are beautiful. You know, these people are beautiful dudes, brother. Thing is that, you know, lions, you gotta know how to treat a lion, brother. You know, it's a difference between a lion and a worm, a lion and a worm. You got to know how to, you know, respect the lion, brother. Respect him. And I don't judge him for what he done or what he's doing. I'm just looking at him as a person. You feel me? I, 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 I talk to him. I don't want to know about whatever. As far as the interview, yes. But because of legal issues, we couldn't release that uh, interview. Because of legal issues, we couldn't release that interview. Wow. That's what that's so that's he's what still, that he's still fighting. He's still fighting to get out, and maybe that's it's lawyer. Exactly right. what it is. Got it. A lot of people approach me on on interviewing members of the Wild Cowboys and 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 things like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, the thing is, Gab, is that my my first episode in this in this platform started off as some brothers from the hood that you know did some jail time, was getting a lot of money in the hood mm-hmm. and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't want my audience to think that that's all that I'm promoting on here, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's part of it. That's part of it. And a lot of episodes are going to come through as far as that life style as well. Um, I also released um the Blondie story, you know what I'm saying? Which had a lot. I love Blondie. Shout out to Blondie, brother. Shout, Shout out to big Blondie, brother. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Brother, and, um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 just part of our story. That's part of the Washington High story. It's just a, mm-hmm. it's just a mm-hmm. part of it. You know what I'm saying? That's not all that the hood is about, you know what I'm saying? Nah, because, because you got to understand, my brother, in each block, in each block, there's probably 500 stories. And I consider Washington Heights from 135th Street all the way to 215th Street. So imagine all Fact. the stories. Because a lot Fact. of people, you know, a lot of people, there's a, there's a lot of pockets of beautiful people that, out, that outshine others. But everybody, 181st, 
you know, 190. I ain't going to say that 193rd. Shout out to Oni and all that. 192nd. 189. 189. 1889. 1889. 18, yeah. 18, yo, 1888. I don't want to. That's another level. 87, that's another level. 86, 85, 84, 83, 82. It goes on to 70, 60, 50. Everybody's a G, brother. Watch this. Everybody. Is no every block. Every block and every it's avenue. It's another world, Lord. brother. It's another world. Yeah. It's another world. And they all about money. They was, I mean, right. where I grew up, they was all about money. I just want to say something. I know that this episode is winding down, but I just want to say go something. Go ahead, though. Go ahead. Finish your and thought. Who am I? You know, this is, this is what I want to say. This goes out to the hood and the hood listens to it. I don't want to be a hypocrite because, yes, I was dibbling, dabbling in the streets. Yes, yes. A thousand percent. And at that time, you couldn't tell me shit. You would have told me shit. I would have looked at you like a sucker. But sometimes, listen. Because sometimes the, the advice that people are telling you is coming from the heart. Because I see all my brothers, shout outs to OED, you know what I mean? Uh, all those kids, man, those are my, a lot of them are my, are my uh, I'm the godfather, a lot of them. And, and, you know, a lot of them, a lot of them are little, my little, my little brothers, man, that I love and I don't want to see them jammed up at night. And the whole watch. talking about, the, talking about the youth. We're talking about the youth, the up and coming. About the youth, the yeah, up and yeah, coming yeah. youth. We're talking about yes, the up sir. and coming youth. So I want to tell you guys. I know, I know, I know that I'm who am I to tell you? You know, wow. Uh, but I changed my life, and uh, yo, dog, I've been knocked. I've been knocked a couple of times. I was there when the whole Trinitario shit was when that whole when that whole uh, Trinitario shit with that was moving and all of that. When Dominicans was coming and you know, and everybody was trying to abuse them, though. I'm talking about the middle book. Before that, shout outs to all the dudes that plantaron bandera. You know, um, what I want to say is this, man. We live in a neighborhood, right? That is two communities, the main two communities. I'm talking about facts right now. One is, one is Jewish, right? How many Jewish you that you are the you are a real Washington Heights dude from the beginning? I, I throughout my whole life I have seen you throughout my whole life you tell me today, and I know you've been I know your whole story I know your brothers I know how they rap how they rock I love yo yo vi tu un trotitorio yo sé tu historia hermano tu vi tu un judío matar otro judío en el alto majada and they like three hundred thousand they like three hundred deep okay? two two hundred a hundred thousand deep because they for Washington Pinehurst Cabrini. You know, uh, Lower Hill. Over New York. Have and then in Brooklyn, seen, have you ever heard? In Brooklyn, they got the whole, they got a whole hood that they, they got on Smash over there okay, as well. Have you ever, have you ever seen a Jew kill another Jew? No. Nah. Another Dominican. Plenty of times. Yeah. Have you heard yeah. Puerto Rican kill another Puerto Rican? Plenty of times. A black kill. brother. Yo, stop the bullshit. Stop falling for that shit. Yo, anybody could pick up a book write it, learn publishing, put up their own publishing. Everybody got a story to tell. You understand? Educate yourself. It will change yeah. your life. Just don't think, because this is a trap off right now, my brother. The system right. is trapping you off. They they yeah. putting certain music right now. They're feminizing the man, brother, with all this LGBT bullshit and your kid. They are feminizing the man, my brother. Because you know why? They don't want us to have no kids no more. Stop the bullshit. Become a man. Hold your shit down. Educate yourself. It happened to me, my brother. I'm not saying that I'm living a perfect life. Gather yourself around a circle that want to win in a positive way. True Believe indeed. Me, my brother. Shit is toxic, my brother. You start hanging around toxic people. You might be hanging around with dudes that you think they like you, but they really don't like you. And that evil eye is affecting you. You always come in and what the fuck is going on with me? Why am I not progressing? Why well, I'm always feeling angry. Is that dude next to you, my brother, looking at you from the sideways? I hate this motherfucker. Oh, yeah, yeah, how you doing when you turn around? Two-faced motherfuckers. Indeed. If you got to, your brother, love yourself. And if you got to leave and chill with people that want to win, make that move, youngins. I love y'all, man, for real. That's what it Yo, is, man. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Before we go, 2021, Nas releases the first, um, <laughs> the first um, of 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 many of of, of many albums, and um, he releases the the single 
Spicy, featuring ASAP Ferg and Fabio Foreman. And bro, listen, man, I get on the phone and one morning all I see is how Nas shut down the hood, 186 in the sixth building, you know what I'm saying? And it was the most incredible thing that I seen. I was like, damn, I wish I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the one time I wish I was in the hood, that I wasn't in the hood. Um, wow. You was part of that history, my brother. Tell us about that night and 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 shout out to Nas, shout out to Jungle, shout out to my brother A Ball, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to shout out to my man Ruben, Ruben Rivera as well. Tell tell us about that night real quick, guy, before we head up out of here. Yeah, you 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 know, we was doing the CIT stuff. We flew out to LA. We was getting a deal with that dude that was producing NWA, one of the films that he did the NWA. I forgot super billionaire. He was trying to help us. He was he was intrigued by what we was doing. Nas was going to be one of the ones that was going to like, rep, like we was going to, not use, you know, Nas was going to be, was going to be one of the names uh, of the production that we was doing. But in the same time, Nas came out with Ken OK and I said, yo, my brother. I mean, Rube was like, yo, you know what? I said, yo, well, Rube was like, because Rube made it happen. So Rube was like, I said, Rube, you got to bring that dude to my, my neighborhood because Ken O'K okay is a Dominican word. Nah, and then Nas was saying it's a Puerto Rican That's word. Dominican slang, baby, fast. I said, that's Dominican slang. My brother would all due respect. Shout out to my Puerto Ricans. I love them to death. But that's just a word. And if they come to the hood, yo, we're going to make this. So we started going back and forth. Sometimes you suppose, you know, we go three way with Nas and this. It's going to happen. I'm just going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Finally, shout outs to Rule and Irish John, my brother. Irish John, if you ever hear me, if you ever see me, when he sees this, he's going to die laughing. Shout out to Irish John. Okay, with that being said, that's Nas's partner. With that being said, Rube was doing the, the, the oh, finally Rube said, yo, it's going to happen. Talking about, you're talking about the dude that, that um is partners with Nas with the sweet chick, chick and all sweet that? Chick. That's my brother. I love him. That's my brother. Irish John is my brother. Irish John is my brother. Peace to that brother, him. man. Yo, nah, that's a real brother right there. Rule, both those dudes are real brothers. So, yo, uh, Ken OK gotta come to my neighborhood. Ken OK gotta come that's, to my neighborhood. If that don't come, right. we're, not gonna, we're not gonna let that shit go down. No way, my brother, that's going to be. So, <laughs> Nas being a, a smart dude was like, yo, that's, that, I said, that's gonna connect. It's gonna, t- well, what happened? It happened. Nas came, we hugged, embraced. Yo, where I'm going? I said, Freddie, please help me, help, help me with the, with the barbershop. So we could hold this guy here. So Freddie, being my brother that he is, always when I brought Ana Maria Polo, when I brought on um, Pride and Glory over there, when I brought the crew of, oh, I have brought plenty of crews to show love to the community as well because I believe in my community. So anytime right. I get a little, a little meat, a little meat, meat with bone, I try to give it to my community so we can all eat. And that's how I run, my brother, because you know the game is better to be told rather than to be sold. Give it to dudes, brother. Right. You know what I mean? But anyway. He came and I'm not gonna tell you after that shit was history, brother. That shit was like that. That shit was history, history. bro. That history. was history. history. Like I brought Ana Maria Polo there. You know what I mean? I brought Ana Maria Polo over there. You know who's Ana Maria Polo? Nah, nah. So, so who's Ana Maria Polo? She's Sorry. From I... Caso Cerrado. Caso Cerrado. Yeah. That's like, you know, so I brought that lady over there. Yeah, yeah. I seen Gangsta. I seen I seen, I seen Pancho Manguera up in there a few times. Shout out to Pancho Manguera. I love that dude. Shout out to my brother Pancho Manguera. Well, we brought Pancho Manguera over there because she told me, G, I used to work for her. And she was like, G, bring me somebody that's crazy. Please bring me somebody that's crazy. I said, listen, I'm gonna bring you somebody that's gonna churn the game. She didn't believe me. So I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you somebody that's gonna churn this shit out. She was like, uh, yeah, whatever. The next day he comes. Yo, she oh, went crazy. Sick. After that, they invited him three times to the show, brother. You imagine so Pupito the- and that shit? You imagine Pupito up there? He would have. Yo, 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 he would have. Yo, Pupito was special to me. Pupito's yeah. very special. Because we connected in a way, because I he comes from, he comes from realness. Like, he comes from a different type of cloth, brother. And it's, that's a rare right. cloth. You can't right. get that in Europe. And that's you can't yeah. find that. Nah, and when you nah. in the presence of that, my brother, when you when that leaves, you like, damn, that shit was worth it. Why it even took? You like, damn, I wish I could have hugged him more. I wish I could have talked to him more. I wish I could have 
children yeah, more why this dude's a special but you know I i'm just getting some, a little bit i got some i got some voice recordings of me and him like talking just messaging and Yo, and, pull, and, one uh, pull one of them on. Pull one of them on, man. Pull one of them on. I'm saving them shits forever, right here. I'm about to put it on as we are. while I look I for that. You, while man. I look for those messages, real quick, uh, my brother, tell us what's in store for 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 for, for, for Gab, Gab, Mr. Gabriel Lopez. Let, let us know what, what's to look out for and and what's in store for you, my brother. All right, um, I'm working on a couple of documentaries. I'm team. I teamed up with a with a lady that's representing me. That she's a. Uh, She's an executive uh, in MGM. She's an executive in the non department of MGM. So we got like three documentaries that we're working on. One of the documentaries that we was working on was the frame documentary. And, um, you know, Pac, I don't want to say what was going on with him, but he's working on something else with somebody that I, I connected him as well. And we just doing, I'm doing like three documentaries that I feel that they're going to be cool for the hood, not only for the hood, but to, to, for the whole world, brother. It's not only for the hood, but it's going to be for the whole world. That's, and that's incredible. Yeah, and I and I landed something with CBS, but hopefully it's going to come out. And it's a beautiful thing, bro. That's what we're doing right now. And well, what about like your your projects that you anything that I mean you you mentioned the frame project that you was trying to work on. Yeah. What about, what about um you know your 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 independent shit? Well, tell us about that. Yeah, we um I'm working on two. I'm work I was working on three independent projects that is under my production, Genius Group Production. Is on the is three of them, but now I'm only working on two because part of the whole thing that I was doing was with the frame project as well. They tried they picked up three of them, but now wow. I you know, she she already knows that frame is not it's not gonna be, you know, uh, available. So now we're just working on two. That I can't really disclose yet, but I'm definitely gonna let it let it be known later on because I want it to happen. So it could be cool, but we're working on it. A lot of people are backing it up, and a lot of people believe in it, and MGM is backing it up, so I feel good about that. And I'm working on something with CBS as an agent, whatever, and let's see what happens, man. Let's see, let's see if it kicks off. Man. That's that's where I'm at with the whole the whole movement right now. That's a that's a that's a that's a beautiful thing, my brother. I'm trying to I'm trying to you know why 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 no, you no, 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 no. you breaking it down? I'm just trying to um. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, let, let, we could do this. We could do this behind the scenes, brother. Um, you know, um, but ne nevertheless, you know what I'm saying, my brother Gab. Thank you for your time, and 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 I appreciate. You know what I'm saying? You you really taking time with me and making this shit happen. This 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 platform of mine, the Heist Chronicles, wouldn't be nothing if I don't interview brothers like you because you are the heart and soul of this neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And and. You know what I'm saying? You you just you just told everybody how how everything you ever did that all you know what I'm saying you made sure that the neighborhood ate, that the neighborhood got its props, you know what I'm saying? Since back in the days, you know what I'm saying, you wanted to make sure that we were put in the forefront of everything that's happening in, in the in the world of of of, of entertainment and the in the world of pop and just just in general, you know what I'm saying? All you know, that that Washington Heights flavor that now finally the world is starting to recognize. And starting to 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 acknowledge, you know, what I'm saying as as a real pivotal in 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 in, in the world of in the world of culture and the world of and and everything that's happening right now, you know, what I'm saying. So um, I just want to thank you, my brother, for for, for your time. Um, tell us, tell everybody your your um, social media, what what we could, you know, what I'm saying your YouTube channel and 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 how we could how we could um, you know keep 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 you um, follow. You know the 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 great Gabriel Lopez. Thank you. Um, C I T C C I T C. Uh, you can say C I T City. That's the YouTube channel, and um, Gabriel Lopez. That's Instagram. And as far as that, uh, Facebook. You'll find me through there through the Facebook. Just Gabriel Lopez. You'll find it. And basically, man. Um, I love my hood, brother. <laughs> I love my yeah, man. man. Oh, I want to give a couple of shout outs before I leave my brother. Yes, sir, go ahead. You know, Definitely. you know, sh sh shout outs to 191st, shout outs to Chronicle Thank Heights, you. the Heights Chronicle, Thank shout outs to the Heights Chronicle, you, shout outs to uh to Ama, to Manolo, to Nino, to E Nice, to uh A Ball. Shout outs to Z O M E R, shout outs to V S, shout outs to uh, Jota Pedro, Lirico. Shout outs to all those dudes in Washington Heights, man, that that we doing it. We doing it. Shout outs to Washington Heights. Shout outs to Queensbridge. Shout outs to 
BK Brooklyn, New Jersey. Shout outs to LES. Shout outs to Blue Boy. You know what I mean? Shout outs to all these guys, man. Shout outs to all these guys that that are making it happen. Shout outs to Pacualito. Shout outs to all those dudes that are in jail too. That are a lot of people forgetting about that, man. Shout outs to the dudes that are in jail. Hold your head, nigga. Yeah, hold yeah. your head, my brother. Those dudes that are locked up. A lot of people don't mention them, man, but that's another world that dudes are fighting, man, that people forget about them. They're not there, my brother. Shout out to all those dudes that are locked up too, man. And with that being said, I love you too, my brother. Get us out. Appreciate it, man. Yo, another another classic, another another Heights Chronicles classic, man. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, my brother Gab. Um, for all the for all the followers, make sure for everybody watching this for the first time, make sure you subscribe to the Heights Chronicles on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And um until next time, man, you know what I'm saying? Keep it going and keep it growing. I don't care. While we travel the globe, the boats will touch every soul. Let's go. Let's go. The Heights Chronicles, Heights Chronicles. What's the topic of the day? We live to debate. The Heights Chronicles, Heights Chronicles. Let's talk about it. Have a seat. Let's talk about it. The Heights Chronicles, Heights Chronicles. What's the topic of the day? We live to debate. The Heights Chronicles, Heights Chronicles. Let's talk about it. Have a seat. Let's talk about it. Listen.